The Atlanta City Council adopts legislation authorizing the transfer of funds from the District 12, 1, 11, and 4's Consulting Professional Services account or Participatory Budget Pilot Program funds in a total amount not to exceed $175,000 to the Atlanta Police Foundation for the purchase of security cameras within the respective districts. The council approves a resolution condemning hate and extremism and affirming the city of Atlanta's ongoing commitment to cultivating an inclusive, safe, and just society and culture that values the diversity of the city's community, works to ensure equitable opportunities in all major facets of society, and celebrates both individuality and commonality. The council says yes to a resolution requesting three council committees conduct a feasibility study and gather recommendations for the establishment of the Department of Public Safety and Wellness in Atlanta, the Council's Public Safety and Legal Administration, Community Development and Human Services, and Finance Executive Committees would be tasked with examining the creation of the new department and holding at least two work sessions with community partners, experts in public safety, and members of the public for feedback. The council greenlights a resolution requesting the city's chief operating officer to work with the Department of City Planning, Invest Atlanta, Atlanta Beltline Incorporated, Atlanta Housing, and the Atlanta Fulton County Land Bank to create a comprehensive action-based plan to expedite the development of affordable workforce and supportive housing on vacant, publicly owned land. For more recently approved legislation, please visit our website, citycouncil.atlantaga.gov. This has been your Atlanta City Council Legislative Minute. I'm Phyllis Jackson. Welcome to Stay at Home Connect. Coronavirus cases continue to place a burden on our health care systems. Georgia hospitals approaching 85% capacity of inpatient beds and 91% capacity of ICU beds. The incoming Biden-Harris administration pushing for major expansion of federal funding in order to manifest his goal of administering 100 million COVID vaccinations within the first 100 days of his presidency. Two additional vaccine candidates are working to join Moderna and Pfizer in the fight against COVID. Officials with Johnson & Johnson say the interim portion of its phase three clinical trials involving 45,000 people revealed the vaccine was, quote, generally well tolerated. As for the Oxford AstraZeneca offering, data from four clinical trials indicate moderate efficacy. Dr. Anthony Fauci says both vaccine candidates could be weeks away from evaluation from the FDA. With over 100 cases of the UK variant currently in the US, Officials with the CDC say it's projected to grow rapidly and could become the predominant strain by March. This variant is said to be more contagious, but so far there's no proof that the variant will lead to greater illness or more deaths. With an eye on this variant and others that are emerging, the agency has also expanded its requirement for a negative COVID test to all air travelers entering the United States. In addition to current CDC recommendations, air passengers will need to get a viral test for current infection within three days of their flight and provide written documentation to the airline. For specifics on the COVID-19 test requirement, you can go to the CDC's website at cdc.gov. The Internal Revenue Service's tax filing season begins February 12th. This date will allow the agency time to do additional programming and test its systems following tax law changes, which led to a second round of economic impact payments due to COVID-19. The IRS says if you want a speedy refund, you will want to file your returns electronically with direct deposit. You can also file your taxes with tax software companies. That includes IRS free file partners, these partners are accepting tax returns now, and they will be sent to the IRS starting February 12th. Atlanta City Council member Andrea Boone joins with Atlanta Police Leadership Institute, Badge to Family Outreach, Georgia Stand Up, and a group of volunteers for a cleanup of the Martin Luther King Drive corridor in recognition of the King holiday. We want to make sure that the citizens know that we are here today. We're here to help them keep the environment clean. We're going to be picking up trash, we'll be painting graffiti, we will be cleaning up many of the cracks and crevices 
that folks miss when they do normal cleanups. We've done a lot of work just to plan out this community cleanup. Atlanta City Council member Natalie Archibong celebrates Martin Luther King Jr. Day by co-sponsoring a community coat drive. This is another example of the love and care that we have for one another. We're in a pandemic and there's a lot of need out there. There's a lot of fear. And so this is one of those ways that we give back and share with our community. Commissioner Johnson is here with us as well. So this is an initiative that's Atlanta and the county. We're partnering with Workforce Strong 258 and other, the YMCA of course, to make sure that families in this area have winter coats for themselves and their children. That's a wrap. We'll see you on the next edition of Stay at Home Connect. Some of these individuals, these young men, 20 years old, facing 77 years, aggravated assault and having a weapon in their hand, and some of these crimes just triple and double. And these individuals have had to serve time, but they're in a program, a mentoring program like the Next Level Boys Academy that's changing their lives, that shows them there's a better way, and they don't have to do these things anymore, and that they can take life in their own hands by going out there and learning how to cut grass, get a job, and they're better for it. Their wants and their needs are now known. So they don't have to go after things that they want and taking it from someone else. They can go after the things that they need, work hard for it, and keep working to get the things that they want. This is now a wonderful thing. And here at the gathering spot, they gave us the space, the opportunity to do it. And at the end of it, they're even offering some of these young men jobs. And some of the business community needed to hear that because they can also continue to offer these young men jobs. And that's one thing that's going on here. And that's why we wanted to do it to show that there's a pathway out of, out of poverty and there's a pathway out of some of these poor choices that young men make. And right now, we heard from the DA, we heard from the sheriff, and we, and, and we talked about solutions. And we're going to keep doing that discussion as we make policies and plans to improve.
is Tuesday, January 26th. It is 1.30 p.m., which means it is time for the regularly scheduled meeting of the Community Development and Human Services Committee. My name is Matt Westmoreland. I have the honor of chairing this body for 2021. I am joined by my colleagues, Michael Julian Bond, Dustin Hillis, Antonio Brown, Natalie Musgrave Archibong, Joyce Shepard, and I assume um, Councilmember Carla Smith will join us shortly if she hasn't yeah. already. Yeah, it has all right, we are seven for seven and ready to get started. Ms. Pulandini, will you kick us off with the remote meeting statement, please? Yes, Mr. Chair, this Community Development Human Services Committee meeting is being conducted remotely as advertised and as in accordance with OCGA 50-14-1. The meeting will be conducted in conformance with Robert's Rules of Order and the Rules of Council as authorized by the City Code. The public may access the meeting by dialing 877-579-6743 Conference ID 831-599-1356, which was noted on the January 22nd, 2021 public meeting notice. The public may also view the meeting on Channel 26, the Council's homepage at citycouncil.atlantaga.gov, the Council's YouTube channel, or the Council's Facebook and Twitter pages via at ACL Council. All presentations are available on the Atlanta City Council Community Development Human Services Committee presentation page. The agenda was published and made available on January 22nd, 2021, via atlantacityga.iqm2.com. In addition, the public was able to submit comments via voicemail at 404-330-6089 between the hours of 7, 4 and 7 p.m. the day before this meeting. All persons present on the remote council meeting conference bridge are requested to mute your phones and speakers, and speakers must be acknowledged by the presiding officer prior to speaking. Each council member is requested to open your Outlook email and minimize the screen, and amendments, substitutes, and informational documents have been distributed to committee members beforehand. Thank you all in advance for your cooperation. Thank you very much. Our first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Um, I will make a motion to adopt. Is there a second? <clears throat> second, Hillis. All right, got a motion by Westmore and a second by Hillis. You will open that vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. You know what? I am logged into the wrong meeting. That would be why I don't see certain people listening. Um, all right. I will assume that that motion passed seven to zero and as i get yeah, myself set into the correct meeting um i will make a motion to approve our minutes is there a second Back Hill. all right i've got a motion by westmoreland and a second by hill the vote is open Will everyone please vote? The vote is closed. Right. Seven yeas, zero nays. Seven yeas, zero nays. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the minutes are approved, and I am logged into where I'm supposed to be, which is good timing. All right, colleagues. Next up on our agenda, item F is the 2021 CDHS goals and objectives. Um, this school and Dini sent around a word version of this document. Um, this morning, and there is also a brief um, PowerPoint presentation that we're going to go through just to let the members of the public know um, what we will be working on this year, and then have any discussion um, and revisions that need to be made before we adopt these as our roadmap for the next 12 months. Um, these were created um, a combination of feedback from members of this body, from conversations with the mayor's office um, from conversations with the various commissioners and executive directors who report to this committee. Um, some of them we will recognize as being goals from last year that COVID delayed a little bit, uh, but we will be taking action on a number of those items over the next couple months. Um, and some of them are new. Um, if you go to the second slide that speaks to the priority areas of focus, they are similar to last year, housing affordability, inclusive economic growth, workforce development, 
the comprehensive development plan, parks and recreation, homelessness, the protection of our tree canopy, and then development impact fees. If we go to the third slide, um, the first of those areas is around housing affordability. I suspect most, if not all of us know that the very first goal we listed in January of 2020 um, was around expanding the housing opportunity bond program, um, which we took action on at our January fourth meeting. Um, this year, there's a new goal as it relates to funding from housing. It's pulled from the One Atlanta Housing Affordability Action Plan that the mayor introduced in June of 2019. Um, and it speaks to, in addition to the one-time source of funds that come from issuing bonds, um, us needing to have a conversation around a, establishing a reoccurring local funding source dedicated to, to housing affordability to fund all the different aspects that come with that program and and trying to identify dollars um, that will come back year after year after year that we can put towards that goal um, as opposed to just the one-time infusion that we get every time we issue long-term bonds. Um, the second piece of that is around similar to goal from last year around eviction defense um, and working with a number of our partners, um, especially as it relates to strengthening emergency and short-term rental assistance programs. All of us know that we committed $22 million in CARES Act funding um, toward rental assistance. We were both given an extension on expending those dollars and are receiving some encouraging reports from the new administration that more dollars may be on the way to local governments um, and want to ensure that we're doing all we can to help residents stay in their homes. Um, the second goal around housing um, is similar from last year. We've already actually passed a resolution that relates to this body providing some oversight over our partner organizations, whether it's Atlanta Housing, Invest, the Beltline, the Land Bank, um, around a conversation on vacant publicly owned land um, in having a conversation about which pieces of those land should be used for housing um, and then which pieces should be used for other purposes. Um, we passed a resolution to full council last week um, asking the COO to help coordinate that effort. We heard from Commissioner Keene last meeting um, that the planning department has already been doing some work on that front. And so by April 27th, but likely sooner, uh, we will have a conversation about how we can provide some leadership and oversight on that front. You go to the next slide um, around inclusive economic growth, three sub pieces. Um, one is from last year and then two are based on priorities that have been shared by members of this committee and members of council. Um, the first is around equitable development along the belt line. Uh, we will be holding a piece of legislation today for a public work session and, and further conversation um, around a pretty significant investment that would be made in the belt line in the coming years um, and wanted to write out that one of our goals for this year is going to be to ensure that any initiatives dealing with the Beltline are consistent with its own equitable development policy um, and focuses on balanced community development, housing affordability, and support for small and locally owned businesses. The second is around Economic Opportunity Fund grants, EOF. Um, several years ago, council passed legislation that committed somewhere between two and a half or three million dollars to invest Atlanta for the purpose of business retention and expansion. Um, we provided a new bucket of funds last year as it relates specifically to middle wage jobs. Um, but the bucket that was allocated back in 2016 or 2017 has been used by Invest, um, which has provided an opportunity for us to have a conversation about what any additional funding to them looks like and what kind of framework we want to have in place that will help direct those dollars um, to for the purpose of business expansion and, and recruitment in Atlanta. And then the last one is around capital. We talked about it last year, but want to call it out in writing this year, um, figuring out ways that the city can partner with others to provide affordable and flexible capital um, to small businesses, entrepreneurs, and nonprofits, especially um, in the city's historically disenfranchised communities. To go to the next slide, um, we have a new, it's not new anymore, um, but a, a relatively new executive director at WorkSource Atlanta, um, who is working very hard to, to help continue turning that organization around and has provided some goals that she would like to be held accountable to um, as it relates to tracking the retention and wages for participants who come through WorkSource, um, figuring out 
as they leave our programs, where are they going? How much money are they making um, to come back and, and report to us to make sure that we're meeting goals around helping equip residents for middle wage jobs, um, especially in areas like IT, healthcare, transportation, logistics, um, reviewing policies at the local and state level to figure out if any of our own rules and regulations are are maybe limiting the opportunities that we're providing to residents. Um, and then the last one for 3B is a holdover from last year. And I know it's a topic that's real close to both my and council member Shepard's heart. Um, and that's around Atlanta Technical College and the thousands of Atlanta residents who make use of that incredible institution every year. And then how we learned last year, the 1,000 roughly Atlanta residents who actually had to withdraw from school um, for financial gaps that on average were around $500 and how we can continue supporting ATC and then the Center for Workforce Innovation, which the Atlanta Committee for Progress set up last year uh, to try and make sure that every resident who wants to go to ATC and receive the education and skills that are offered there has the chance to do so um, without any financial barriers. The next few um, are shorter and more to the point. If you go to the next slide, every five years, council has to adopt a comprehensive development plan. It is time for us to do that again. Uh, we will be working closely with the Department of City Planning and Community Development. Uh, we expect a draft of that to be introduced in June. We will adopt that document in September. It will provide kind of the guidance and direction for the city and our development um, vision for the next five years. Um, so that will be an incredibly important conversation. If you go to the next slide, uh, protection of our tree canopy. We've been talking about trees for a long time and we are gonna bring this topic home in the next three months. Um, today, we will hold a piece of legislation that Councilmember Matsukai introduced last week um, to adopt a new tree protection ordinance for the first time in 20 years. There have been a lot of productive conversations between folks on the city staff, advocates in the tree and development communities over the last several months. Um, we now have a draft in front of us um, that we can dig into starting with a work session in the middle of February um, and then are shooting to, to adopt that new document um, at our April full council meeting. Good number six, it's been even longer since we took a look at our impact fees, but that's gonna change really soon as well. Um, the folks in the planning department have done a lot of good work um, with the development community and will be introducing legislation at the next meeting um, for us to discuss and deliberate and consider. Hopefully that we can adopt that in March um, so that we can begin the process of updating our impact fees for the first time since 1993 and providing much needed funds for infrastructure and parks um, and our public safety departments. Last two, um, much like the CDP, the Parks and Recreation Department needs to adopt a new comprehensive system master plan in May um, for their accreditation. It provides us an opportunity to try and build a roadmap um, for how in the next 10 years we can strive to double the amount of green space in the city um, and achieve the goal that I know is important to Councilmember Hillis of every Atlanta living within a safe 10 minute walk um, of a quality park. And then finally, our friends and partners over at Partners for Home um, have outlined their goals for the year, placing 800 households or 800 individuals into permanent housing through the LIFT initiative, ensuring that all the entitlement funds deliver services that are low barrier um, and accessible and adhere to equal access laws. Um, investing in permanent supportive housing pipeline through the creation of 550 new units. And then finally, kind of similar to affordable housing, having a conversation about how we can identify a sustainable revenue stream um, that isn't just the one-time infusion of bonds, which is what we saw a great deal of in 2017 around the city's homeless population. So eight buckets, um, a number of objectives underneath each of those. I appreciate each of you for taking a look at those over the last week or 10 days. Um, would love to hear any and all feedback that folks have, revisions that we need to make um, so that we can adopt these and get to work. Mr. Brown, why don't you start us off? Hey, Mr. Chair, thank you so much uh, for this comprehensive re review. 
Um, I think we did an incredible job last year addressing a lot of what we put forth at the direction of the committee. Um, just two things I think is important to, to bring up and, and we can figure out if it requires an amendment or how we include it. Um, one is right now I am in conversations with negotiating a, a, a proposal with Georgia State University um, through Dr. Wheeler, Wheeler um, to look at how we could establish a workforce development bond that would be supported through an employee opt-in payroll deduction. Um, they are really interested. They think it's a, it's a really uh, innovative idea that's never been done before in this country. And they, they believe that um, it could work, but they want to perform a feasibility study around how it would work. And, and so understanding how it would not create implications within the budget as well. So I think that that's something critical that we should add um, to the work of this committee because I think it's going to be critical when we start talking about um, how we're creating um, jobs in these communities, especially post the pandemic. Um, I think that uh, after this last stimulus check and, and folks are still unemployed, I, I think that we're going to face a lot of challenges as a city. Uh, so, so if there's a way we can include that um, into our goals. And then the other piece of this is I think that one of the things I've been intentional on researching and, and trying to understand that I think fits into your overall uh, goal around affordable housing is just I think we need to do a better job around supportive and workforce housing and um, specifically workforce housing because it creates affordable opportunities for teachers and our police and folks that um, are serving our communities in different ways um, that face challenges to live in the communities in which they serve. So those would be the two things that uh, just stood out to me. Um, and, uh, you know, Mr. Chair, I'll take your thoughts on if you believe that would require an amendment of some sort. But I do think that the Georgia State study is going to be significant to this city, especially if we can do a bond without um, a budget implication. Sure. And no, I appreciate both of those. Um, I'll tell you what, I think to your point, the first of the two things that you mentioned um, is not explicitly or implicitly mentioned in this document. So why don't you think about what kind of language might make sense to add to category three, um, and I will bounce over to Council Member Shepard, who is next in line, and then we can come back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure, Ms. Shepard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, one of the things that I would like to add is um, looking at the uh, the Department of Housing. Uh, I have some major concerns around the structure, internal structure, and how work is getting done in light of COVID-19 or not. But I'm continuously getting information from my community about issues around uh, the fact that we can't building permits can't get building permits, having internal structures with the housing division in terms of the spawns. Also, same things in terms of um, people building illegally and how do we respond to people building illegally in communities and how the department handles that. Uh, we have an incident over in one of my neighborhoods right now where uh, the developers just continue to building. They've stopped work orders on this several times. Unfortunately, they're building on weekends. So they'll do a stop work order. They won't do anything during the week, but on weekends, they're coming back out and start building again. Then you get into a whole issue in terms of who comes out on weekends and actually text them or actually how do we call the police. It's just a lot of things in terms of uh, just internally looking at that department in terms of process and procedures, in terms of zoning issues, uh, how I've seen over the last several months and over the past year, a lot of issues have happened internally in the housing division where uh, things have just kind of not been looked at or how they're handling things are not comprehensively. So this year, this is, again, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but it's just something I think that as a city, 
we've got to get sure. better job, a job of looking at how do we handle, how do we look at this internally? I don't know if we need to do an audit or what do we need to do, but just looking at internally how that department is handling things and look at it more comprehensively. So I'd like to put that on the list of things to do also. Okay, excellent. Um, I will definitely, yes, I, I hardly agree with that. Um, and we'll figure out the best way to include all of that. Um, I also believe that there might be a audit through the audit office coming up um, on building and zoning enforcement. And so it might be much like we did last year with when we asked the audit to auditor's office to audit the tree trust fund, which helped provide um, some information for the new ordinance. Doesn't this might be able to work that way as well. So we will definitely add all of that. Thank you. And then, Councilmember Shepard, do you want to work on that language now, or do you want to just kind of understand that we're going to add that as a goal, and and we will figure out the right language um, before we distribute this to everybody? Yeah, I think we we can work on it together. We don't have. I'm not going to work on the language right now, okay. but. Uh, if, uh, but what we're going to do is take all this in today, and then we'll come back before we finally vote on the conclusion of this, and then the language will already be there. Is that okay? So we're going to come back maybe at our next meeting and say, here's what we found in terms of the goals and all the language and stuff can be added in. Well, I was hoping we could adopt Get it done today. Today, yeah. Um, but but I'm. Why don't we? I like honestly the way you said it that that we kind of set us set a new priority area. I think it's kind of its own little bucket um, around providing um, oversight as it relates to building and zoning enforcement um, and, you know, conducting review and, and figuring out where there are gaps and then passing any necessary legislation to close those gaps. Okay. I'll take that language. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And then, Council Member Brown, are you all, all right with a similar kind of an addition to three or a new 3C that talks about partnering with Georgia State University to complete a feasibility study around a $250 million workforce development bond? Absolutely. The only thing I would add. Um, Matt, or, or you tell, um, Mr. Chair, and you tell me if you believe we should add it. The, so they just got back to me over the weekend. Um, the study is going to cost us around $35,000. They've requested that we submit to them a request, um, for a proposal for them to do the study. Um, so I don't know. No, no, let's add the word. I like that. No, partner with Georgia State University to fund and complete a feasibility study around a $250 million workforce development bond. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Yep. Thank you for that, Mr. Chair. Sure. Sweet. Anybody else? Thoughts or comments, revisions, concerns? If not, I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve, Brown. Motion by Brown. Is there a second? Second, Shepard. Motion by Brown and second by Shepard. If you will open that vote. We are the dynamic duo. Indeed. <laughs> um, Mr. Chair, this can be conducted with a voice vote. Works for me. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. I think I heard seven distinct voices there. Certain people would be proud. Um, all right. Um, thank you. Those goals are adopted 7 0. Looking forward to the work ahead. Mr. Massenberg, will you take us to our next item, which is our 31 minutes of public comment? I'm rejoicing. Giving honor to the Spirit of Christ. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least, he is unjust also in much. Luke 16, chapter 10, verse. Fleshly acts are unjust leads to death. And just acts of Jesus lead to everlasting life. Desire to bless others by being Christ. And Montgomery, when you ask 
to practice unjust acts. Then you ask for death. I am sworn by myself. The word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Isaiah 45, chapter 23rd verse. Look unto me, and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth is a glorious invitation to all to come to the Lord. Behold, I stand the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. Revelation 3, chapter 20, verse. To sup, die, make to have fellowship, and enjoy Christ's blessing. The prophet which prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. Jeremiah 28, chapter 9, verse. Two prophets will honor the written word of God and will not lead anyone to false God. God is real when we make him real in us to do his will, to let his word come alive in us. And that's what we need, to fight faith in us, around us, and in others. Thank you for listening and obey Jesus Christ like men and women family, government, to be like Christ, is life. Hello, my name is Patty Duran, and I'm a resident of the city of Atlanta, and I'm calling about the Community Development Committee meeting agenda items on the SSD agenda items number 13 and number 14 for the uh, sales service district for the Beltline. And I'm calling to ask that you not approve the legislation enabling that in its current form. Um, I think that the information that has been put out regarding the benefits of that SSD is misleading and it's stating half truths such as that this SSD would bring equity and affordability and jobs access when in fact none of those things will be provided by this SSD because it simply continues the concrete trail. And we have a lot of the concrete trail right now and equity and affordability and jobs access do not come with the concrete trail. In fact, it uh, alone does not bring those things. And the, the only thing that will bring those things is transit. The original vision of the Atlanta Beltline was that it would be an accelerator of mobility and it would connect disparate communities across the city. Um, but it hasn't done that because there is no transit. And without it, those things can't happen. So um, I'm asking you to revise the SSD so that it is bigger, so that it includes transit, and to, um, to stop saying that the current SSD is going to provide things that it's not because this is really just major spin. So um, please stop making the false claims about it or please prove out where those things would happen. So that's my comment. I really hope you can revise it. I appreciate it. Um, thanks so much. This is John Reagan. I'm a resident of the city of Atlanta and I wanted to comment regarding the proposed tree ordinance. Uh, I believe it has not had proper review by the public or by the city council. And I would appreciate uh, the time for the public to have more input. Thank you. Good day. Hello, my name is Catherine Chestnut and I am extremely concerned about the new Beltline Special Service tax, tax district proposition that has uh, been put forth. Um, I'm very concerned. I feel like there needs to be much, much wider community engagement and more community oversight on the tax district proposal. Um, ideally, I think that the funds should be given to the local CID if there is to be a tax increase 
However, as a small business located on the Beltline, I would ask that you postpone any taxes until at least 2022 while we are trying to recover from COVID and we're still not there yet. I really appreciate you listening. I don't think that the Beltline should just be given that money to do with whatever they want, wherever they want. The local CIDs need to be given the bulk of those funds and they can work together to improve those communities. Thank you very much for listening and I appreciate your service. Hi, this is Letta Weber from Grand Park in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm calling because I'm concerned about the trade protection ordinance listed on the committee agenda for January 26th. Um, I'm concerned that this ordinance um, offers less trade protection than before, and um, we need more trade protection than ever um, at this stage. If uh, you would please consider this a vote, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Beth Wilkes. I live in Grant Park, and my city council member is Carla Smith. I'm calling about the tree protection ordinance that you all listed on the agenda for tomorrow night. Um, I'm concerned about the lack of taking into account the public input. There's been considerable public input that seems to have fallen out of the final draft. Um, and I'm concerned about the lack of transparency. This is a critical, I've lived in um, this neighborhood for over 30 years. I believe this is a really critical issue that we're facing as a city. And I think the public input needs to be taken into account before any final votes are made. Um, and I'm concerned that this draft has eliminated some of the rights of the public and also eliminated the um, information that was taken during the previous meeting. So I'd ask that there be more public meetings and before a final draft is brought up for a vote. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Brodbeck. I live in District 2 with Amir Faroki representing. I'm calling to comment on agenda items 13 and 14, the proposal to create an SSD $100 million special tax district to pay for Beltline Trail. I would like to respectfully request that the committee create a special services district that is roughly three times the dollar amount of the proposed one and lasts three times as long and that includes Beltline Transit, not the $100 million SSD that's only 10 years that has no transit. We do not want a concrete necklace in our city. That was never the vision. The trail only approach to building the Beltline is accelerating gentrification and displacement of poorer communities. And the window to build rail is closing very fast. Instead of the vision of a 22 mile Beltline transit creating an emerald necklace with mobility and equity, we will end up with more high rise parking decks and less diversity. The idea of just a concrete trail means air, poor air quality, continued choking traffic, and everyone is completely car dependent. Density cannot happen without transit, and any efforts to address it between now and transit is simply a Band-Aid. I would like to see ABI's recommendations from their 2013 strategic implementation plan to proceed with the full vision of the Beltline to include rail, as stated. Thank you very much for your service. I am Carol Holliday. I live in District 5, Madeline Archibong's district. I am calling about the agenda item regarding the new tree protection ordinance. I was shocked to learn that a new tree ordinance was sent to city council last week. I am dismayed that there has been no public input since the committee discussed a draft over six months ago on June 25th and that overwhelming public input has been ignored. At the June meeting, for example, 82 people made comments. One city council member said she couldn't remember a time more people made comments about a proposal. The public had one goal, better tree protection, and they have provided a lot of input to and many practical suggestions for how to achieve better tree protection. 
Yet the draft ordinance introduced to council on January 20th and on your agenda today offers less tree protection and less transparency than the existing ordinance. And it also takes away the public's right to appeal. Never did I hear a single member of the public ask for less tree protection or less transparency. We have been to meeting after meeting since 2017 and submitted comment after comment, and it is beginning to seem like an effort to wear us out and wear us down. This issue is too important to give up, however. Atlanta's trees are fundamental and integral part of our environment. They are critically important to the health of our community, our economy, and the well-being of our current and future residents. Please put an end to the lack of transparency in this process. Please listen to your constituents and let's get to work on common sense improvements to the tree protection ordinance instead of going backwards. Thank you for your time. My name is Beth Smith. I've lived in Atlanta since 1998 and spent the past 20 years working as a residential realtor. In the past year, MARTA drastically splashed bus routes people depend on for life's basic needs. That needs to change immediately. And then last week, Atlanta's leaders signaled they're willing to abandon the most important part of Beltline redevelopment, the part that would deliver maximum benefits, the transit. Atlanta's leaders have a choice, chase a few small projects or take advantage of once in a lifetime opportunity that Beltline Transit offers. Please stop thinking small. Stop stalling. We can do this right away. Residents have already waited long enough. You must immediately find a way to restore MARTA service in 2020 and get going on Beltline Rail Transit. Why? Because of the massive benefits this one transit project can deliver with a remarkably low investment. The people of Atlanta want to supersize MARTA's effectiveness, double or triple the amount of affordable housing, minimize displacement brought on by gentrification. For those and many other reasons, Atlanta needs Beltline Rail. Start now. We're counting on you to have Beltline Rail up and running by 2035. Please take your current proposal, make sure it has anti-displacement measures that baked in, and expand it to include delivery of a complete Beltline. That means light rail transit along all 22 miles of walking, cycling trail. MARTA, the mayor, city council, and ABI get to decide the fate of the Beltline. They know what happens on a Beltline without transit, runaway housing prices, and massive displacement. We've seen it play out in Old Fourth Ward. Don't let it happen again. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Max Mandelis. I'm calling with a comment regarding the special service district around the Beltline that is to be presented to council uh, tomorrow the 26th. I believe this discussion should be tabled because not enough information has been shared with the public. Uh, I'm concerned about the transparency here. The small businesses that I represent that have properties, whether leased or owned um, in, in these areas are have not had the opportunity to really review uh, the legislation. Thank you very much. If you need to reach me, I'm at 404-842-6570. Thank you. Greetings to you, council members and staff, and special greetings to you citizens and voters of Atlanta watching and are listening to your government in action and taking note about how comments from the public are treated by our elected officials. Then I would see advocates, public policy analysts. On the average, little more than 1% of eligible citizens, senior citizens, and stakeholders attend neighborhood planning unit or meetings now being held virtually. The FDUR 9 continues to be disconfirming in 2021 when it comes to the needs of the NDUR residents and stakeholders along the Campbellton Cascade Corridor and beyond. With Anthony Robinson as the 2021 Vice Chair and Ricardo Jacobs and Collis Claire pulling strings in the background, the concerns of citizens in NPUR are still being ignored. 
Where were you at the UR9 while residents of Atlanta Housing Authority properties were seeking a way to become involved in the selection of the two persons who will now serve as resident commissioners on the Atlanta Housing Authority Board of Directors on the behalf of the thousands of other residents in need of serious and outspoken representation. So where were you at the UR9? While NPUR residents are wondering when and how the coronavirus vaccine will trickle down to their communities and how coronavirus monies are being allocated. Where are you now, NPUR 9? While NPUR residents are still trying to understand the many issues related to public safety, including carjacking, cameras against crime, the proposed Department of Public Safety and Wellness, the proposed transfer of the city jail to Fulton County, and the 2021 goals and objectives of the City Public Safety Committee. So come out from behind the scenes, UNPUR9. Stand up, speak out, and help address some of the concerns of the residents and stakeholders of Neighborhood Planning Unit R. You Vice Chair Anthony Robinson, you call us Claire, you Ricardo Jacobs, you Alfred White, you Renette L. Scott, you Allison Hathaway, you Sherry Williams, and you other NPUR9, and you other NPUR9 cohort supporters and enablers. Hello, this is Yankin Israel. I'm part of the ownership group uh, with property on the Beltline. If you'd like more information on the uh, SSD tax, prior to uh, my vote. When you get a chance, please call me at 813-391-8420 or my email address is Y-I-S-R-A-E-L at ccim.net. Thank you. Hello, this is Cameron Pym. I'm an owner of uh, a couple Beltline properties and um, just wanted to get, I guess, before I'm able to vote in one way definitively or the other, I just kind of want to get more information on what what the costs are and what that looks like, um, you know, benefits in, in exchange for it. So, um, thank you. Hi, my name is Robert Gibson. I'm a parcel owner of a property on the Bell Line. I was hoping to get more information on the tax before I'd be prepared to vote one way or another. Thank you. Hello, this is Brian McCarthy. Um, I'm with 10SB LLC. Um, we are owners on the Beltline. Uh, I was trying to understand a little bit more about the Beltline taxes um, before I can say I'm for it or against it. If you could please provide some more information, that would be helpful. Thanks. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Nick White. Uh, I'm a property owner downtown. And um, I just wanted to leave a comment regarding the uh, SSD tax affecting properties around the Beltline. Um, I would ask that respectfully you defer any vote on that um, just from a standpoint of transparency. I think it would be hard for me or anyone um, in my type of position to figure out whether or not um, I am affected by this tax. Um, I cannot make uh, heads or tails uh, as to whether or not I would be or not. And I suspect I'm not the only one in that position. Um, so I think there needs to be more clarity around this um, tax uh, and a little bit more communication with the public. Uh, so those are my comments. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate what you do uh, and thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, my name is Susan Rowe. I live downtown. I am concerned about the proposed tax on uh, the businesses around the Beltline. Um, I realize that we are interested in completing the Beltline and we need to complete the Beltline. Uh, but we need to make sure that there is sufficient oversight on what these taxes would be, who they would be applied to, and ensuring that they would be used for transit on the Beltline. After all, the Beltline is intended to include transit. Uh, we need to make sure that we are not running our small businesses out of town to the benefit of the large developers. Thank you. My name is Gayla Jamison, and my address is 441 
Richwood Road, Northeast 30307. I'm calling about the tree protection ordinance that's listed on the committee agenda for January 26th. And I'm wondering why the ordinance was introduced at the full city council and released for public review just last Wednesday, which seems to be a very short time uh, for considering the many years um, a short period of time for this considering the many years and the, the cost of this process. And I'm also wondering why there hasn't been any word about the ordinance since June 2020. Uh, there, yes, there were consultants who held public meetings and took the public's response. And then the consultants held some more meetings and then they canceled the meetings. And that seems strange to me because the consultants were supposed to hear and understand what the public had to say. So after the consultants canceled the meeting, they took $1.2 million and left uh, for their work. Um, but they couldn't even put together a final document of the tree ordinance. So now this work has gone back to the city, which has created a draft that does not include much of what the public wants and less tree protection than before. Also, what is strange, is strange to me is that this latest draft does not give the right of public appeal. In other words, the city appears to forego any appeal from the public, which is antithetical to transparency. The city council must listen to what the public says to make the process more transparent and give us, the people whom you serve, a tree protection ordinance that truly protects trees. Thank you very much. My name is Johnny Martinez. I own two businesses in Atlanta in the proposed area for this new Beltline tax. That's Joystick Game Bar and Georgia Beer Garden. Uh, I'm hoping that you will rethink this tax that is being proposed um, for a variety of reasons. Number one, there needs to be actual community engagement before a plan is come up with. Um, the Beltline has been meeting for months now with city officials and city council members uh, and with large property owners. Uh, essentially, they've been meeting with everyone who's not going to be paying this tax. But for a small business owner like myself who owns property in this, t in this area, uh, I'm being asked to pay for a tax to finish the Beltline when the city has yet put any real investment in my own area and we get nothing back from the Beltline itself. We don't get any people who are on their way to the Beltline. We've not had any uptick because of the Beltline. Um, and, it, and so it seems a little bit, it, it doesn't make any sense to put the burden of this on small businesses and small property owners and renters throughout an area without engaging with them beforehand. So there needs to be actual community engagement. Uh, so that we can also discover what the alternatives are. Uh, it seems inappropriate to ask the people who benefit the most from the Beltline, single family property owners, to not contribute. And then for those of us who are not benefiting from the Beltline to contribute. There also needs to be clearly stated community oversight. The legislation that we have seen and read is very thin on the ground. There's nothing in there except you know, how much is going to be raised and who it's coming from. So all the goodies that the Beltline is promising is going to happen, there, there's nothing in there in place that has, that states what will happen if that doesn't occur. And this, of course, is all taking place because the tab uh, generated, at least per Atlanta in town, the paper, a billion dollars less than what was expected, which is why this tax is needed. Why in the world would we believe any of the numbers that's coming out of the Beltline since then? Um, it also damages our local area's goal for our own CID. We'd like to tax ourselves and have that money go to our own community. Uh, right now, it takes an act of Congress to get a trash can on Edgewood Avenue. And there's no rail uh, included on this as well. Um, 
so please rethink this, or at least the process that we go through. Uh, this is a huge mistake, um, and it affects and hurts the people who can afford to pay. Hello, it's Russell Paulson, uh, owner of Paulson Foods at 748 Donnelly Hollowell Parkway. Uh, very confused about this SSD tax. And, uh, I haven't heard anything about it. I think it's a little early and uh, would like a lot more information before it moves forward. Again, it's Russell Paulson, Paulson Foods. If you need to call me, it's 404-731-8699. Again, very confusing to have this pop up on the SSD tax. Thank you so much. Have a good Hi, my name is Brandon Lai. I am calling in opposition to the Beltline SSD. Uh, I own two small businesses that are within the Beltline planning overlay, and will, both of which will be subject to this tax. Uh, and although the Beltline has for months been reaching out to very large developers and to city council about this proposal, not once have they reached out to those who will actually be paying the tax. Well, I will. Uh, if they had, I would have told them that I'm not willing to pay a tax unless there is guaranteed transit on the belt line, that I am not willing to pay a tax to build out a sidewalk on, a, on the other side of the city when the current sidewalk does nothing for my business. That I am not willing to pay a tax when it is not equitably, uh, when the burden is not equitably shared throughout the citizenry of Atlanta. Why are homeowners exempt from this? Are, are they better than renters? Are they better than small business owners? Uh, or, or is it just the old political adage that homeowners vote and renters don't? <laughs> Uh, I would be able to tell them that they are hurting our chances at creating a CID in the old fourth ward. And that is something that is very much needed. There is, there are so many unmet needs in our neighborhood. We can't afford to send our money anywhere else other than our own neighborhood. Uh, and at least with the CID, uh, there's accountability. That money is, uh, is managed by a board of property owners who are actually paying into it. Uh, here, there, there seems to be, in this legislation, no accountability uh, for the Beltline at all. Uh, and the Beltline is making some these grand promises of affordable housing and help for small businesses, all this. And, and yet they have broken promise after promise for years now. I don't see why we should trust them Certainly not why we should trust them with our tax dollars. Uh, why I should, anyway. Um, I I don't think uh, this SSD uh, was very well conceived. Uh, I do not trust it. I don't think it. And so, therefore, I am fully against it. I hope y'all really reconsider uh, creating this Beltline SSD, especially how it currently stands. Thank you. Hi, this is Beverly Dabney. I represent the West Atlanta Business Alliance. And I just wanted to make sure I go on record in saying that the information regarding the Beltline taxes, there has not been enough time to review this information. A lot of people are not aware, especially on Donnelly Hollowell and the surrounding area. Uh, I want to make sure I go on record, and I think that businesses are deserving of having the time to review um, this information. Thank you, Beverly Daphne. Hi, uh, my name is Matthew Rao, R-A-O, and I am both the resident of the city of Atlanta and a business owner um, with an in a storefront here in Midtown Atlanta in zip code 30309. I'd like to address uh, Commissioner or um, Chair Matt Westmoreland and the other council members on the Community Development Human Service Committee about agenda items 13 and 14. Those are legislation 21-0-0048, 21-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0
and four nine, the legislation to introduce an SSD around the Beltline for the city of Atlanta for the benefit of constructing the remainder of the Beltline Trail. My comment is that I think we just need to think actually a lot larger than what we're thinking here. One hundred million dollars uh, won't really get us very far and will tie up a very important funding instrument in the form of an SSD that the city has at its disposal and only one chance to create. I think it could be three or four times that amount and last longer, say 30 years, and have funding for additional items, particularly the transit on the Beltline, which has still not yet commenced. Where the Beltline crosses MARTA, we could also have uh, a zone at each of those nodes where uh, a special tax that's called a SALAD, S-A-L-A-D-E, is imposed and pays a portion of building the infill MARTA stations. Uh, I'd like to encourage the committee to step back and give this great study and think about what we're really trying to do to go beyond the goal of 5,300 affordable housing units to something much larger and to connect those units to transit at the very beginning by letting the special service districts provide the funds for all of that. Thank you. All right, I believe that concludes our public comment. Thank you to the members of the public who reached out with your thoughts, mainly on two issues, and I'll make a quick comment on both of them. Um, it is true that legislation was dropped last week around a new tree protection ordinance and around the proposal concerning the SSD. Both of those items will be held in this committee for the foreseeable future. Um, we're going to have a work session on each of those items. Um, we're also going to have to have a work session in February on impact fees. Um, there will be at least six community meetings um, that the Beltline will be hosting to have conversations with folks all over the city around this proposal and what it would potentially mean to every single property owner um, and folks who rent both commercial and, and multifamily spaces. Um, so a lot of conversation to happen in the future. No action is happening today or at the next meeting or at the meeting after that. Um, but I appreciate folks reaching out um, and kicking off those conversations with their comments today. All right, Ms. Pulandini, will you take us to communications, please? <clears throat> Item number one, 21-C-0010. A communication from Ms. Rita Gibson, Chair of Georgia Act, reappointing Ms. Bambi Hayes Brown to serve as a member on the Housing Commission on behalf of Georgia Act. This appointment is for a term of two years to begin retroactively on September 17, 2020, and expire on September 16, 2022. Ms. Hayes Brown, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. If you would just take a minute to introduce yourself to the, or reintroduce yourself to the body, that'd be great. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Council Member Westmoreland and to the entire committee. My name is Dr. Bambi Hayes Brown and I am the President and Chief Executive Officer of Georgia Advancing Communities Together. We're a statewide nonprofit affordable housing and community development membership organization. I hold a bachelor's in business and a master's in business administration and also a doctor in theology and a PhD in biblical studies. I also hold a Georgia real estate broker's license and co-chair the House ATL Policy Committee and serve on several national and state boards and uh, advisory committees as well. Um, I have been in the affordable housing and community development arena for about 24 years and uh, I can bring a wealth uh, of experience uh, and knowledge to the Atlanta Housing Commission, uh, mainly looking at trends as it relates to housing uh, and drilling down into particular neighborhoods into Atlanta, because as real estate uh, professionals, we tend to see that information uh, on a real-time basis and uh, it's very fluid, so we're able to see those trends and I can bring that information back to the Housing Commission. Additionally, uh, my federal connections uh, can also influence favorable policy that would benefit the city of Atlanta and its neighborhood. But most importantly, uh, I am a person with lived experience as it relates to housing challenges. As someone who was formerly homeless, 
and a former public housing resident, it is very important that we get the input from the communities and uh, engage in communities and people that we serve to make sure that the policies that we recommend are most beneficial to people who need the most help. Thank you. No, thank you very much for, for that background and for your service so far um, on our mission um, and your willingness to continue serving. If there are no questions or comments, I will make a motion to approve. Second, Hill. Uh, motion by Westmoreland and a second by Hillis. If you will open that vote. The vote is open. Vote is closed. All right, seven yeas, zero nays, that item is favorable. Thank you, Dr. Hayes-Brown, appreciate your service. Thank you so much. Next up. Item number two, 21-C-0011, a communication from Council Member Sustin Hillis, District 9, Andrea L. Boone, District 10, Marcy Collier, Overstreet, District 11, Joyce M. Shepard, District 12, and Andre Dickens, Post 3 at Large, reappointing Mr. Larry Stewart to serve as a member on the Housing Commission. This appointment is for a term of two years to begin retroactively on March 19, 2020, and expire on March 18, 2022. Mr. Stewart, you there? I am. All right, appreciate you joining us. Would you take a minute and reintroduce yourself to the body, please? Certainly. Um, I, I, I feel a little naked talking after um, after Bambi. <laughs> She's so accomplished. Um, so so um, my name is Larry Stewart. Uh, I am an entrepreneur and currently work as a consultant at Slalom uh, Consulting in Atlanta, Georgia, as a product strategist and solution delivery um, executive I have worked uh, most previously relative to, to housing uh, as the former chief of staff for Post 3 at Large uh, for Councilman uh, Andre Dickens. Uh, during that time, I spent most of my time working to usher through the legislation and inclusionary zoning um, that is, uh, I think, focused on what we had for the West Side um, around the Beltline and now it's starting to become, I think, a template for other inclusionary housing legislation. Um, and so I'm excited again to, to work not only um, from our, our past two years, focused on getting our processes in, in line for the Housing Commission. Um, last year, spending more time doing analysis and, and providing some, some communication around what we think uh, housing should be focused on for affordable housing. Um, but then this year, uh, I'd like to, to spend and, and focus our energy on um, trying to uh, do more proactive analysis um, and best practice communications um, for for the city of Atlanta. Thank you for that background and for your past and future service, Mr. Brown and then Mr. Hillis. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to say uh, to to my colleagues, um, Council Member Shepard and, and, and some of the other colleagues that also serve on uh, the Public Safety Committee, Larry Stewart and his firm is the firm that Council Member Dickens has recommended for us to consider to conduct the feasibility study on establishing the Department of Public Safety and Wellness. So they've been really focusing on this as well. And, and uh, I, I just, I didn't know that, Larry, you were going to be on here. So it's really great to, to hear your voice. And, um, you know, I think it's great for Council to hear from you as well. Yeah, thank you for that. Mr. Hillis. Yes, I just want to say uh, thank you. Thank you, Larry, for your continued service. Uh, glad to have you as a resident here in District 9. And um, thanks again. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Hillis, which I will second. Please open that vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. That item is favorable. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Thank you. Next item, Ms. Polandini, do I need to make a motion to open the public hearing? Yes. 
if you could please make a motion. I will make that motion. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Motion by Westmoreland, second by Brown to open the public hearing. Please open that vote. The vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays, the public hearing is open. I don't believe we have any public comment. Is that right? That's correct. But if I can read the caption in for the record. That'd be great. 21-R-3028, a resolution by Community Development Human Services Committee to amend the City of Atlanta Urban Redevelopment Plan for Urban for Atlanta Urban Redevelopment Number 1 as amended to incorporate the Downtown Atlanta Master Plan, the Atlanta Transportation Plan, the Council District 12 Neighborhood Blueprint Plan for Adair Park, Capital View, Capital View Manor, and Sylvan Hills, the Council District 12 Neighborhood Blueprint Plan for Hammond Park and Ferguson, the D3 Westside Revised Plan, the NPUG Plan, the NPUH Master Plan, the Preservation of Pittsburgh Plan, the South Atlanta Plan, the Washington Park Neighborhood Visioning Plan, the Westside Land Use Framework Plan, the Westview Plan, the Beltline Sub-Area Master Plan Updates for Sub-Areas 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, the Connect Atlanta Plan, the East Lake MARTA TOD Plan, the Lakewood LCI, the Oakland City Fort McPherson LCI 10-year updates, the Project Green Space Plan, the Reimagine Grant Green Bio Plan, the Turner Field Stadium Neighborhoods LCI and West End LCI, and for other purposes. Mr. Commissioner Keene or Mr. Humphreys, are one or both of you here? Uh, hi, Councilmember. Hi, Councilmember. This is uh, this is Josh Humphreys. Sure. If you would walk us through this piece of legislation, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so uh, this is a uh, an update to the urban redevelopment plan uh, that was done in, in 2010, um, and uh, it adds a whole whole bunch of plans uh, to the to the urban redevelopment plan. Um, this was a request uh, we've been working with Invest Atlanta. Um, uh, DCA requests uh, documentation for uh, things like state opportunity zones. Um, and so updating these plans, the urban redevelopment plan allows us to qualify um, for in different incentive programs. And so uh, this is relatively routine, just making sure that we, we link the two plans together um, or the, the plan to the urban redevelopment plan um, so that we can qualify um, at the state for uh, uh, this one particularly, what, what prompted this particularly was uh, renewing uh, state opportunity zones um, in downtown Atlanta. Awesome. Any questions or comments from colleagues? All right. I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Oh, Chair, I think you're uh, close, close the motion. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I uh, will do that. Motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Appreciate it. Um, please open that vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. All right. Seven yeas, zero nays. The public hearing is closed. Now I will make a motion to approve. Second, Brown. Motion by Westmore and second by Brown. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays, the item is favorable. Thank you, Mr. Humphreys. Thanks, everyone. Um, next up. Uh, item number four, 21-0-0064, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee authorizing the mayor, her designee, on behalf of the Atlanta Workforce Development Agency, also known as Workforce Atlanta, to accept the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act youth grant in the amount of 171 thousand two hundred thirty dollars and ninety two cents from the technical college system of georgia to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the fy21 job training grant fund budget atlanta workforce development agency by adding to and to by adding to anticipations and appropriations grant in the amount of one hundred seventy one thousand two hundred thirty dollars and ninety three cents and for other purposes item number five twenty one dash o dash zero zero six five an ordinance by Community Development Human Services Committee authorizing the mayor or her designee on behalf of the Atlanta Workforce Development Agency, also known as Workforce Atlanta, to 
takes up additional workforce innovation and opportunity act duplicated worker national emergency grant funding in the amount of eight hundred thirty four thousand two hundred thirty two dollars and zero cents from the technical college system of georgia office of workforce development to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the fy21 job training grant fund budget by adding to anticipations and appropriations in the amount of eight hundred thirty four thousand two hundred thirty two dollars and zero cents and for employment and training services through march 31 2022 and for the purposes item number six 21-0066 an ordinance for community development human services committee authorizing mayor her designee on behalf of the atlanta workforce development agency also known as workforce atlanta to accept the workforce innovation opportunity act duplicated worker grant program in the amount of one hundred eighty five thousand one hundred fourteen dollars and fifty two cents from the Technical College System of Georgia, Office of Workforce Development, to authorize the Chief Financial Officer to amend the FY21 Job Training Grant Fund budget by adding to by adding to anticipations and appropriations in the amount of $185,114.52. And for the purposes, item number 7, 21-0-0067, an ordinance by Community Development Human Services Committee, authorizing the mayor her designee on behalf of the Atlanta Workforce Development Agency, also known as Workforce Atlanta, to accept a Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act Youth Grant Program grant in the amount of $1,094,943.00 from the Technical College System of Georgia, Office of Workforce Development, and directing the Chief Financial Officer to amend the fiscal year 2021 Job Training Grant Fund budget by adding to anticipations and appropriations in the amount of $1,094,943.00 and for the purposes. Item number 8, 21-0-0068. An ordinance by Community Development Human Services Committee authorizing the mayor her designee on behalf of the Atlanta Workforce Development Agency, also known as Workforce Atlanta, to accept the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act Belt Program grant in the amount of $92,557.26 from the Technical College System of Georgia Office of Workforce Development. It's authorized the financial officer to amend the FY21 job training grant fund budget by adding to anticipations and appropriations in the amount of $92,557.26 and for the purposes. And item number 9, 21-0-0069, CDP-20-002, an ordinance by Community Development Human Services Committee to adopt Atlanta Beltline Sub-Area 5 Master Plan, the Atlanta Beltline Sub-Area 5 Master Plan update, to amend the 2016 Comprehensive Development Plan by incorporating by reference that plan and for the purposes, and to use NM Council District 2. Thank you much. Moving on to our regular agenda. Good. Item number 10, 20-0-1792, 20, 20 an ordinance by Community Development Human Services Committee to adopt a third-party agency inspection manual pursuant to OCGA Section 8-2-26G to establish pre-qualification standards for third-party inspectors doing business in the City of Atlanta and to establish guidelines for administering and processing the third-party inspection program and for the purposes. Uh, request from the department is to hold i will make that motion is there a second second brown motion by westmoreland second by brown please open that vote the vote is open vote is closed seven yeas zero nays that item is held next item Item number 11, 21-0-0032, an ordinance by Community Development Human Services Committee adopting the City of Atlanta 21, 2021 to 2025 capital improvements element, which includes capital improvements that the city intends to fund in whole or in part with development impact fees in compliance with the requirements of the Georgia Development Impact Fee Act and for the purposes. Thank you. Any questions or comments from colleagues on this item? All right, I will make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Motion by Westmoreland, second by Brown. Please open that vote. The vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven days there and as item is favorable. Next item. Item number 12, 21-0-0047, an ordinance by Councilmember Michael Julian Bond requesting the Department of Parks and Recreation to provide maintenance for the clay courts at the Bitsy Grant Tennis Center in an amount not to exceed $40,000 in zero cents and for other purposes. Thank you very much. I'll make a motion to hold. Mr. Bond, any questions or comments? 
Uh, no, second that motion. Thank you, sir. Motion by Westmoreland, second by Bond. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays, that item is held. Next item. Items 13 and 14 are related to the Beltline Special Services District. Would the committee like to take these as a block? Yes, we would. Okay. Item number 13, 21-0-0048. An ordinance by council members Justin Hillis, Carla Smith, Matt Westmoreland, Joyce M. Shepard, Michael Julian Bond, and Cleta Winslow to request the establishment by the Atlanta Development Authority of the City of Atlanta of a master program for financing or refinancing the acquisition, development, construction, equipping, and installation of the Beltline Trail Completion Project through the authorization of the authority of its master drawdown special services district tax revenue bond in the aggregate principal amount, not to exceed $100 million, to authorize the execution, delivery, and performance of an intergovernmental agreement with the Atlanta Development Authority of the City of Atlanta to authorize acknowledgement of service and filing of an answer on behalf of the city and validation proceedings to be brought in validating the master drawdown special services district tax revenue bond and the security therefore and for other purposes and item number 14 21-0-0049 an ordinance by council members justin hillis carla smith matt westmoreland Jason shepherd michael julian bond and cleta winslow creating the Beltline Special Services District, designating the boundaries of such districts, providing for definitions, providing for reports to City Council, and for other purposes. Motion to hold. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Brown, do I did, oh, okay. Motion by Westmoreland, second by Brown. Nope, second by Hillis. The vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays. Those items are held. Next item. Item number, and just to clarify, the screen is showing that items uh, 12, 13, and 14 were favorable, but they will be held in committee just for the public. <laughs> okay. yep. Item number 15, 21-0-0063, an ordinance by Council Member J.P. Massacite. To amend the Atlanta City Code Part 2, General Ordinances, Chapter 158, Vegetation, Article 2, Tree Protection, to adopt a new tree protection ordinance for the City of Atlanta and for other purposes. I'll make a motion to hold on this one as well. Second, Brown. Motion by Westmore and second by Brown. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven years, zero days, that item is also held. Next item. Item number 16, 21-R-3037, a resolution by Council Member Andrea L. Boone authorizing the mayor or her designee to apply for and accept a grant from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration to assist high-risk youth and families and promote resilience and equity in communities that have recently faced civil unrest and about not to exceed $1 million in zero cents per year for up to five years and for other purposes. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Lonan, are you here? Mr. Chair, actually, Megan Sparks or Kajira Abdur Rahim will be speaking to this item. Okay. Are there any questions by the body for either of those individuals? All right, in that case, I will make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Thank you, Brown. Motion by Westmore and second by Brown. The vote is open. Vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays, that item is adopted. I believe we are moving to item number 30. Yes, item number 30, 20-R-4752, a resolution by Community Development and Human Services Committee authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Atlanta to execute a services agreement with the PATH Foundation for the purpose of providing support to the Department of Parks and Recreation for coordination of volunteer support, fundraising, project management, maintenance, and other services and programs throughout the city of Atlanta 
with the term commencing upon execution of the agreement for a term of five years with two one-year renewal options and further purposes. And there's an <laughs> amendment in your packet uh, with an updated agreement. I will make a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Motion by Westmall and second by Brown. Please open that vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven years, here and days, that item is amended. There are no questions or comments. Thank you to the PATH Foundation. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Brown. A motion by Westmore and a second by Brown. <clears throat> the vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven yeas, zero nays, that item is favorable as amended. I believe that concludes our legislative agenda and therefore this 81 minute meeting of CDHS. Um, before we adjourn, just a quick comment, colleagues, I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a busy February. Um, we will need to schedule work sessions for impact fees, the proposed special services district, and the new tree protection ordinance. So be on the lookout for messages we try and close in on those dates um, in the next day or two, and then we will communicate that to the public. Um, if there are no other questions or comments, Ms. Smith? Yes. I move to adjourn. Thank you. Motion to adjourn by Smith. I will second. Good meeting. Consent of those present. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Good, Good meeting. Good meeting. Um,